if you're ready to stand on the line, if you're ready to fight back and serve it to the criminals trying to enslave you and steal your wealth through monetary creation and exorbitant taxation, you're in the right place. Welcome back to another edition of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, water filters, bug out bags, and first aid kits. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your entire order at CampingSurvival.com. Fox 519 from Radio Free Readout is with us again today. Fox, welcome back to the show. Always great to be here with you, Mark. How are you? Oh, very good, very good. Looking, looking forward to getting settled in in the uh, in the Florida readout. So, uh, uh, well, it's it's not quite uh, this inland Pacific Northwest. It's uh, it's better than where I was. So, uh, looking forward to that. Now, I really appreciate you coming on the show on such short notice. But we've had some really serious economic developments in Greece, and you're kind of our go-to guy for all of that. So, uh, what's happening with Greece? Well, I think probably one of the major things that have happened with Greece in the last 24 hours is the Greece central government actually put out an edict to all its local state-based governments and actually sucked up all residual liquid cash back up into the central budget. And what that really means is, is picture that on the scale here in America. If something were to happen, all of a sudden our federal government were to run out of money and they were to, say, contact the state of of Texas or the state of Arizona or the state of California and say, send us all your liquid capital. We're going to use this to fund the general budget and any loans and lines we have to pay. That's essentially what the Greek government has done. And so that's a very, very serious move when you think about what Greece is facing, especially in terms of its repayment schedule. And so, um, you know, last night I sat down and I kind of looked at Greece's overall real basic balance sheet. And they really only have about 14.5 billion euros in liquid capital. Uh, and that's going to have to carry them through the end of this year unless they can find some other method of infusing extra capital within their uh, their economy or within their operation their operational budget. Now, when they take all of that money from the, <laughs> from the local level governments, how do, how do those governments pay their police, fire, and other municipal services? Uh, they will probably be paying them with IOUs. Um, I, I can't imagine that a Greece being as small as it is, how, how they're going to afford to keep uh, basic infrastructure staff on, uh, your water departments, your power departments, your police departments and fire. Uh, over there, it's uh, mainly they have a lot of emergency services hubs. I don't see how they're going to be able to pay their people because what they have to do is they've got several really, really big payments coming up. Uh, one of those is going to have to be some treasury bills of $1.4 billion that they're probably going to end up swapping out here on May 7th. Uh, they have another payment to the IMF, about $774 million, and an additional treasury bill holder payment again on May 14th. There is no way they can logistically make all these payments like this all year long and not have to walk away from every ounce of debt that they've got and, and, and open up a and bring back their own currency to work within the country. And then do you think those police and fire departments, would they, fire, firemen, would, you, would they be able to take those IOUs and buy groceries and pay electric bills with those? Oh, no. No, heavens no. I I think we're going to see Greece return back to what Greece's roots were, a barter-based economy where, unfortunately, those folks who don't have the skills and they don't have something to trade are not going to be able to, to go and buy groceries and do the things they need to do. It's going to become a very scary time very quickly in Greece, uh, which will affect in turn the rest of the world. And and that's exactly what uh, the head of the ECB, Mario Draghi, said. Uh, he's saying that an, a Greek exit or Grexit, as they're calling it, would uh, push the eurozone into uncharted territory and basically uh, send shockwaves to the rest of the world. Oh, agreed. And to watch a country the size of Greece, you know, just barely mutter the word default and just to watch the impact it took to the markets on Friday. Um, I mean, we saw a 300 point decline in the Dow here in America. Imagine what it's going to be doing, yeah, for the ECB. When a nation like Greece, you know, finally makes up its minds, and I, and I think that Varoufakis is a very, believe it, I think he's a very wise guy and has a very, very tough job 
uh, to lead this right now in Greece. And I think that when they walk away, yes, it is going to be uncharted territory, but I think it's territory that even Draghi thought that they would never, ever, ever be in because they thought they had a perfect system. They thought they had a system of debt and they could continue to print money and that Greece would just continue to take out loans. And now Greece is saying, no, we can't afford this. You know, it's it's enslaving our people. It's crushing our economy. Uh, I think a Grexit, you know, come May 9th is very, very plausible. And what about the other troubled members of the pigs nations? Uh, do you think Spain, Italy, you think they might decide to jump on the bandwagon if they can see if they see Greece getting away with not paying their debt? Oh, absolutely. And I don't see why they wouldn't. That's the thing. You know, if you can watch your neighbor live in his home for free, we'll use the real estate bubble as an example, you know, that, you know, well, my neighbor's not paying his mortgage, so I'm going to stop paying mine too. And next thing you know, everybody in the block has stopped paying their mortgage. It's going to be darn hard to enforce that and get those people out of those homes. It's the same when it comes to the ECB and the pigs nation is that these guys, Greece walks away, Italy is going to be next to say, you know what, why are we doing this? We can walk away, walk back to our old currency, you know, start doing bilateral trade agreements with other countries outside of the ECB. And you know what? We could probably make it have a go of it. It is going to absolutely crush the euro. It's, it is uncharted territory, and it's uh, frankly a bit unnerving. And JP Morgan's CEO, Jamie Dimon, said the next financial crisis will be worse than the last. Now, that's some pretty powerful rhetoric from a, a bank that uh, typically would be in the business of sugarcoating everything, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it's not that he said that when. It's it, 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 the next crisis is going to happen. I mean, J.P. Morgan's people are, are very smart. I worked for Jamie Dimon for many years, and you know what? That they're a very smart, smart institution. Um, they're doing things like limiting capital controls, uh, monitoring anybody who's taking out five thousand dollars in cash or greater. They're putting things in place right now that when these type of events take place worldwide. They can easily lock down capital and keep the bank afloat to some extent for for a period of time. I mean, they're even going as far as to sending a letter out this week that states that if you have a safe deposit box within a J.P. Morgan vault, and this is nationwide, that you should be expecting this, that you'll get a letter that states you will no longer be allowed to carry cash or valuables within that box. Now, valuables may mean something to the effect of gold or silver. You know, they're... They're looking for ways to try to flush that cash out and put it into accounts. So when something like this happens on an economic world scale and money starts flowing around rapidly, they can suck that capital up as soon as they can, lock it down, and they funnel it back to a central bank, kind of like our Fed. It's the same thing with the ECB. We're going to be watching here in the next week or so. I wouldn't be surprised if there are bank runs like crazy next week in Greece. And the last time you were on the show, we talked a little bit about uh, some predictions by a couple of folks that were predicting some serious economic events coming this September. Now, the ranks of the folks predicting that crisis keep growing. Uh, for the total right now, I think we can include Bix Weir, David Morgan, Martin Armstrong, and that's just from the secular side of things. And then we've got Jonathan Kahn and Mark Blitz on the uh, Biltz, I'm sorry, on the prophetic side. And are you still on high alert for this September? Oh, absolutely. And one of these things that I'm looking at is that Greece could be the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, in my analysis that I did on Greece last night, one of the biggest things I've seen is that uh, if you just take the liquid capital that Greece has, their repayment structure around their payments to the ECB and the IMF, uh, we absolutely, I mean, they cannot even make it to late August. That's the thing. They won't make it that far. And that's that to me kind of go, okay, if you can't make your payments that far, I mean, they're maybe, maybe looking at maybe getting to July with some type of measure, some type of IOU. But yeah, we're looking latter half of this year, seeing something dramatically different take place within the financial sector. I mean, we, last time we talked of the Shemitah, uh, it being the jubilee year for that, uh, we've talked of you know, yes, the the ranks of those growing is. I think that enough people 
are saying it loud and clear now that we really do. Americans are probably needing to sit up and kind of go, okay, there's something to that. And we've got uh, the bond guru, Mohammed El Larian, and uh, he's recently decided to move into uh, the majority of, of his assets into cash and getting out of the markets. Uh, it sounds like a lot of mainstream guys are starting to join those in the alternative media sector. You see trouble ahead. Yeah. Uh, El Arian is a good guy to watch. When he starts making some moves, you should probably be making some moves within your retirement portfolio. Um, you know, stay away from your Buffets. Believe it or not, a guy to watch is Soros. When you watch Soros start liquidating his assets and moving into things like gold or silver, um, he's a guy, you re- he is your canary in the mine. Um, El Arian is good. He's got solid investment advice. Uh, if he's saying get into cash, get into cash. And uh, you, you mentioned the DOJ's assistant attorney general, Leslie Caldwell, uh, telling banks that they should just skip the suspicious activities reports or SARS and just call local authorities. If anyone withdraws $5,000 or more in cash. Now, is this a, a form of capital control? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that, being in the being coming from the finance industry, the SAR was kind of your way, your your safety net at a branch or a bank to be able to protect your job. You know, if you felt something was off or weird, you could file a SAR. Something may never come of it, but nobody ever really looked at the SAR as a as a vehicle to control capital. Now they're looking at it. You can file a SAR for you know less than that. You can file a SAR for forty bucks on somebody cashing a funky check, but. Now that we have the DOJ saying anybody out there pulling out five grand, call your local authority and get them on a list, that's a very, very scary thing for our own DOJ to say. You know, they're saying that's they're, they want to know where that money is going to. They're going to they're going to start tracking those names and those people and your balances and where that money flows to. I mean, so if you've got to take it out, you know, hit a bunch of ATMs, try to, you know, if you can push your daily limit up, do that. But yeah, they're absolutely looking at maintaining capital controls because I feel once Greece goes, it's going to kind of be like a whole just what push one domino and then the next and then the next and then the next. Some, you know, guys like Krugman and stuff there, they don't think it's going to ha- it's going to happen, but I would be very very surprised if Greece did not walk away or at least some type of re- severe restructure plan took place and the ECB did a huge write down. But Krugman also thinks that uh, an attack from aliens would be good, right, for the economy? Yeah, I've heard that. He's he's a knucklehead. <laughs> now, you worked in banking for years. Is it illegal to take out $5,000? No, it is not illegal to take out $5,000. I was in banking for 14 years, six months, and three days. And let me tell you what. it It's your money. It's your money. I cannot say that again. You walk in your bank tomorrow and you look at your bank teller and say, I'd like to withdraw $5,000. If she says, let me go ask my manager, you say, bring that manager over here. That is my money deposited in, in your bank. You should have absolutely no qualms about it. You know, If they file a SAR on that, well, that's just sad. But it is your money. It is not the bank's money. They know it too. That's the thing. It, it, it feels to me like it's just uh, sort of propaganda to try to make me feel like a criminal for just about everything that I do. It's just if you if you uh, walk out the front door, that's that's suspicious and you're probably a criminal. If you go out the back door, then that's even more suspicious and you're more even more likely to be a terrorist. So it, it feels like that they're trying to tell everybody that you're a criminal and when the the boots on your throat, you should just submit to it because you're a criminal. Well, I think we're seeing a lot of predictive programming take place around that. Yeah. You know, scare people that they want to leave the money in the bank. Don't take the money out. Oh, you could have problems. Oh, we're going to put you on this list. You know, we're going to put you on a list and then we're going to, you know, you look at what's going on with Jade Helm. And I don't have a lot of the details around that. Other members of our uh, Radio Free Redoubt staff have that. But, you know, these these, these items, these this nanny state, this this, yes, this conversion of, the average American turning into the average criminal and, you know, just to submit to the will of the government, 
it's it's just sad watching this kind of just crumble and fall away. We've got some really good people out there that are are standing up and saying, no, this isn't right. This is wrong. Um, you know, but at the same time, there's just unfortunately not enough of us saying that right now. And I think that finally at the end, there'll be people starting to stand up. But by that time, it'll be way too late. And like you said, this is definitely a form of capital controls. What does that tell you? about uh, about the future or about uh, what they're preparing for or uh, what we could be facing. When I see methodology change behind capital controls and as money begins to slow down moving into the economy, what I see is that banks are trying to bolster their balance sheets and bolster their, their cash on hand um, to prepare for an economic event that I that I that you and I both know it will change the scope and, and face of the American financial system. You know, if tomorrow we find out that Greece walks away from and officially says, you know what, we're out, we're done, you know, we start seeing bank runs. That can only be hidden so long before we we see that hit the American media. When the American media sees it, they're just going to have a feeding frenzy on it because they're, you know, a bunch of ratings whores. And so, but what's going to happen is, is that's going to roll down to the local economies, and we're going to see people flooding into the, their small, you know, their city banks, their small, and they're they can only keep about forty to forty five thousand on on hand. And I know that's up here in eastern Washington and Southern California and in Texas, they keep between sixty five and seventy. That goes really quick. You know, so I know they're trying to keep as much of that in house, and they're trying to control that throughout the process. <clears throat> but capital controls are one of those things that, when we start seeing moves like the DOJ saying this, we start seeing J.P. Morgan, big banks stating there is going to be a crisis. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're preparing themselves for fallout that 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 we have, the likes of which we've never seen. And. To get around the having the cops called on you for taking five thousand dollars out because maybe you want to buy a used car or, or or whatever or you just want to have it just to have it, um, and you couldn't get much of a used car for five thousand dollars. You know, uh, I've said it a couple of times. You know, anything you get for five grand around here, you're probably going to need a tow truck to bring it home. It probably doesn't even start. You know, uh, that's that's getting in, that's getting pretty close to jalopy territory right there. Five grand for a used car. Uh, Maybe maybe one thing that folks could do is instead of depositing their, their paychecks at the end of the week or end of two weeks, they could just cash those checks and start keeping that at, at, at home, uh, and it would look a little less suspicious than actually making the withdrawal. Yeah, a cashing your check is good. Um, some banks require identification. Some banks, they have to type that into the computer. Uh, some banks are actually scanning IDs now. <coughs> And they're, they're scanning IDs, they're bringing that data in, they're tracking the check number, the routing, the account number, and who cashed that item. Uh, you can split it into off into things like preloaded debit cards and then pull those out of the ATM, but you can only get so much out at a time. I think your safest methodology is to take your paycheck, let it deposit to the bank, you know, deposit out a fixed sum per week, say 500 bucks. You can be buying groceries at 500 bucks, and then you can go down to your local gold and silver deal or go to silver.com, your sponsor, and buy you know your gold and silver and those kind of things. So that way you've got some additional tangibles on hand. So you're still bringing the cash out of the bank. Um, you're not attracting attention to yourself. You're still bolstering your other balance sheet with gold and silver, lead and dirt. Um, you know by using by by using and buying that way. So. There's a couple different ways the listeners can protect themselves. That's how we we do it in the Fox 519 household because I know the industry. I came from the industry. I used to have to do SARS on people for $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, and I knew these were good, honest people. They just wanted to have cash in the house. I actually one time towards the end of my career, and I'm sure that contributed probably to some of my uh, expedience out of the field that I was in, was I stopped doing SARS. I told him, I said, no, these are normal people. These are not drug dealers. These are not gun runners. And I got busted for that. They wanted to know anything large coming out of the bank. That's ridiculous. It's your money. 
It's time for a quick break, and we'll be right back. The dollar has lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proved to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on silver and gold. Check out Silver.com today. When disaster strikes, it's too late to prepare. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shears, suture kit, stera strips, tourniquet, ACS chest seal, tough strip bandages, gauze, and so much more. $89 includes shipping. To buy your individual first aid kit, go to to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the homepage. Order today before it's too late. And you mentioned uh, buying silver, and you, you think that's a good way for, for folks to hedge themselves against a, a coming crisis? And, and, and also, what about gold? Because Goldman Sachs came out a couple weeks ago and said that it's uh, there's probably less than 20 years worth of gold left in the in the Earth's crust. And I'm sure that uh, there's still some after that, but I, I would say that that's probably uh, at present or grades is what they were talking about. And, and beyond that, then you start getting into uh, having to mine uh, massive uh, exponential amounts of more tons of dirt and sand to ever get that ounce of gold. Oh, yeah, and the cost per cost per ounce goes up significantly when they have to pull that out of the earth process it you know and refine it out of there i think of it there's a strip mine outside of hell in montana by a company called pegasus and they just keep cutting a path deeper and deeper and deeper into the earth because they have to go down further and further and further to find the deposits and they i can't even tell you how many millions of of, of dirt yards they go through to get you know little flecks of gold and then they cook it out and they do all sorts of things in the process I got a chance to tour that mine a while back but gold and silver are always a great way to hedge yourself it's a biblical currency it's a a it's a God derived currency the Bible says that you know heaven will be made out of uh, the city in heaven will be made out of silver and gold uh, we know that God has put this stuff on the face of the planet and when somebody you know steps up and says there's only 20 years worth it left in the crust, that's a pretty significant prediction. Now, yeah, we're going to have to see we're, that's going to drive the price of gold and silver up significantly because as gold becomes too expensive, the next currency down is silver. And I would guess right now, out of that 20 years left, the Chinese have already bought up 19 of it, anyways. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh... And like you, you mentioned, silver will be the next one down. And, and I think right now the the ratio is 75 to 1, which historically it's been around 20 to 1. So uh, if we started seeing silver being used more as a as a uh, an investment and as a form of wealth preservation the way that gold's used, uh, we'd probably see it get closer to that 20 to 1 historical ratio which uh, which would really take it up quite a bit. Yeah, and I think it, w- it would drive it up significantly. I think one of my main concerns, Mark, is I, as I watch these events unfolding, I just don't think that enough people are paying attention. I mean, these are major, major things we're seeing. I mean, we're watching Greece walk away from, you know, over $350 billion worth of debt. That's unheard of. You know, we're seeing the heads of major banks say, another crisis is coming. Please wake up. We're seeing, you know, major investors, solid guys who, you know, who are on your MSNBCs, who are on your, your CBS Money Mornings, who are there saying, you know what, this is the way we, they're saying, get out of the market and get into cash. The warning signs are there and people are not paying attention. And I, and I you know, we watch how, you know, Walmart has closed, what? 11 different locations all through the south over you know well over two you know 2,000 people you know potentially um, in multiple multiple different locations who have lost jobs I mean when we see that type of infrastructure starting to take place and those things starting to disappear and it begins to happen more and more and more rapidly this is a sign that our listeners need to really kind of stop thinking of it from a the- from a theological perspective of yeah, it could happen, and 
yeah, this is great to talk about it, to, oh, this is happening, and this is an actual realistic uh, event that's taking place, and they need to act upon that. So, as you mentioned, the DOJ is getting ready for some sort of an event. Um, Mohammed El Larian, evidently, he's getting ready for some type of an event. Jamie Dimon, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, they're preparing. They're doing what they need to do to to hunker down and position themselves to weather this coming storm that they see coming. Uh, what should we be doing to prepare for whatever's coming down the pike? Well, I think, I mean, obviously a lot of our listeners are already seasoned preppers and people who are into preparedness. Now, uh, we've talked about this a little in the past, and I think one of the biggest things is we've got to make sure our communities are ready to weather this storm. Um, you know, we've talked about how it's not, it's not the government's responsibility. It's the church's responsibility. Um, it's the community's responsibility to make sure that the people in the community are taken care of. I would, I would venture to, to, to wager a guess that right now about uh, 89% of the people who are listening within the audience right now have at least a year and a half worth of food in the house, are you know in some type of survival situation, ready to rock and roll, are well able to prepare and take care of themselves, are well armed, um, but – the plan, what does that plan look like outside the gates of their home? You know, one of the main things that the Fox 519 team is focusing on right now is recruitment, uh, bringing in more individuals, um, but at the same time is working on connecting to the local community and saying, okay, we know, we know this is going to happen. We know that we're going to be on our own for a fixed period of time. But when we begin the rebuilding process, and that's the biggest thing I think of all we've got to focus on, what does this look like? six months after the economic event takes place? What does it look like eight months, nine months, 12 months? We've got to get in that mindset now that we've got to be a part of the rebuilding process that we've got the food, we've got the water, we've got the water filters, we've got the medical training, the, the injectables, we've got the, who knows, the latest scope on our on our ARs and all the rifle training we could possibly you know choke down. But if our community is not ready to sustain itself afterwards, that's the biggest factor. That'll kill everybody faster. You can say, boo, when nobody's working together, that now is the time for leaders to be stepping up all across the country saying, well, you're right. I could take care of me and my family, but boy, tell you what, the community comes knocking on my door. I can't help them. You know, So be forming committees of safety and committees of correspondence to be looking at you know, folks within the area saying, you know, I'll connect with the local, uh, local emergency management you know, because they're those are your neighbors, those are your friends, the firefighters, all those guys are going to be the ones who are going to go. All right, we're on our own. FEMA's not coming. So right now, preparing our communities is probably the best thing we can focus in on the moment. Now that we've got ourselves taken care of, um, and that's going to require a stretch from a lot of the listeners because we've always been, you know, inward focused. Make sure your family's fed. Make sure your family's protected. Make sure you've got the right communications gear. Make sure you guys have small unit tactics down. You know, make sure that you guys are tight, 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 and you've got that. You feel like you're a well, well-oiled machine. But what do you do when you've got five people walking down the road with a wheelbarrow, going, "We're trying to find food." That's that's where the rubber meets the road in the rebuilding process. And it's really, really cheap to get uh, a couple extra bags of beans and rice uh, to feed folks that that didn't plan ahead oh absolutely uh, and it is cheap right now it's cheap it's effective it buys loyalty and i don't think people realize that when the collapse takes place or some type of event that drives a collapse when you're buying loyalty with food you can sway the public opinion and it, this may sound like a you know we've just <laughs> went from a preparedness show to rules for radicals but Really, truly, when somebody's gut is rumbling and you hand them a bowl of beans and rice and say, hey, I want to talk to you about a few things, all of a sudden their mind is going to open up to things you've, they've never considered before. You know, you start talking about things like getting back to a constitutional republic and rebuilding the community. You know, you got to have a distribution network for information. Um, you know, I think you know, we think of our buddy uh, Glenn Tate over there at the 299 Days team. You know, they talked about using the Grange system to disseminate information, you know, local schools, 
you know, if you have a grain system where you're at, wherever you're listening in America tonight, um, those are your granges. That's what they originally were for. Communities came together. They had meetings. They had food. And information was passed out and people were in the know. You can do that. You know, the community can come together again, and that's where you can begin the rebuilding process. Fox, a lot of really, really good information. Thanks again so much for uh, making time, especially on such short notice. But, uh, you know, it was really important information that we needed to get out to the folks. And thank you so much for everything that you do over at Radio Free Readout as well. Oh, absolutely. And God bless you guys over here at Prepper Recon. And, uh, folks, if you haven't bought an IFAC yet, go to Mark's site. Buy an IFAC. It's one of the top of the line in the market you can get. Support this guy. Absolutely support this guy. Thanks so much, Fox. In the days of Noah, book two, persecution by best-selling author Mark Goodwin. A globalist conspiracy transpires by way of a false flag attack against America's energy infrastructure. Noah and Cassandra Parker witness a complete economic meltdown, which is intentionally triggered by the event. The assault is blamed on patriots and Christians who are rounded up into detention centers across the country. Noah and his friends must take action to prepare for the meltdown and defend against the totalitarian regime, which is gunning for their freedom and, quite possibly, their very lives. Get your copy of The Days of Noah, Book 2, Persecution for Kindle, paperback or audio edition at Amazon.com today.